What's up, everybody? Cole Sands here again this week. It is January 16th, 2022, and um, we're going to talk about Lake Chickamauga fishing. Uh, so um, we've had some cold weather. It's uh, getting down to the 20s at night. Uh, in the daytime, the highs are in you know, mid-40s. It's, uh, it's really cooling off that water temp. Uh, this past week, um, water temps seemed to range from 41 to about 47. Um, which made for some actually some really, really good fishing. The fishing has, has exploded on Chickamauga. Um, in my opinion, the, the bite has gotten unbelievable. And, uh, you know, I, I think it's going to just keep getting better with these colder nights. You know, as long as the lake doesn't freeze over, these fish, these big Chickamauga fish are going to bite. And uh, I can't wait to see some of these giants that my clients get to catch these next couple of weeks. Because um, it's going to be some, some, some really fun fishing. But, uh, so... Today we actually had about four inches of snow. I just went into my boat and, uh, you know, I was, I was trying to dig through the snow to get my rods off my deck just to show y'all what's working this week. Um, and there's really been about, you know, three or four baits that work uh, for me when the, the water gets super, super cold. Um, you know, I'm going I'm to talk about those and then uh, I'll, I'll talk about my setup as well, you know, um, you know, as far as rod, reel, line. Um, what I'm doing there, because I've had a lot of people ask, um, you know, what what equipment am I using for for each uh, for each bait? Um, so for starters, uh, earlier this week we had a bunch of bunch of rain the, the weekend before, so there's still some muddy water left in places. I talked about cranking a little bit, you know, in my past videos, but one that works really really good for me when the water gets super cold like it has is more of like a a slender shad wrap kind of style. Um, something with a real tight wobble, that type of crankbait. And my favorite one is a hardcore uh, 60, uh, SR60 um, crankbait. And this is a really little finesse crankbait. It, it, it makes a really tight wobble. Um, and I, I really throw it in two colors. And when the water's a little stained like it is now, I'll throw it on, uh, I'll throw that red color. That is Ghost Red Tiger. Caught some nice fish on it earlier this week. Um, and I actually throw that one on a spinning rod a lot of times. It's kind of a light, uh, a light crankbait, but I like it on a spinning rod. I throw it usually on a 10 pound braid to a, to an eight pound fluorocarbon leader. And I like it on a spinning rod cause I make super accurate casts, you know, really close to bluffs or close to rocky banks. And I'll throw it out there and I'll reel it. And I'm, I'm able to get it down a little bit deeper with a spinning rod. And plus it, it's a light bait. You can get a further cast. And then what I'll do a lot of times when the water gets super cold, instead of just, you know, cranking it in fast, I'll just, I'll get it, I'll reel it down to the bottom and then I'll drag it. I'll drag that crankbait slow. Like just, you know, I want to tick every single rock. And the bites are not aggressive when the water gets this cold uh, on a crankbait. They just kind of load up and, um, you know, it's, it's a it's a bait that'll get you some bites that that other people probably won't uh, won't get. Cause you know, some of these fish, they're, they're holding close to these rocks cause there's a little bit of heat left on the rocks and you can, you can hit them with a, a little shad wrap style um, or in this case, a little hardcore uh, shad crankbait. Another color I like as the water cleans up is that little ghost, uh, that little ghost color. Uh, that's kind of my two main colors. Water's dirty. I'll throw that, that ghost red tiger. Um, as, as it cleans up, I'll switch to more of that translucent color. And that's kind of the two main colors I stick with, with it. Throw it on a spinning rod. Um, actually with this, it weighs a little bit more than other shad, shad wrap style baits and you can throw it a little bit further. So you can get away with the bait caster. I still like them on a spinning rod. Um, but that's a fish catching son of a gun when the water gets cold. Uh, next, um, we're going to talk about the, the big player right now. Uh, what we caught pretty much most of our giants on last week, had some crazy number days. You know, the water's in the, the mid to low forties and we're still catching, you know, 30, I think we had 34 fish one day. Uh, the, our other days were not, you know, still 15 to 20 fish, you know, really good numbers. Um, for for winter fishing, and I, I think this this upcoming week we're going to have some some more thirty fish days if uh, everything goes right. But uh, as you can tell, I had to knock the snow off these. Um, but so what I've been throwing this is the four and a half inch Diamond Baits Alabama rig. I love this thing, dude. Um, caught a ton of big fish on it. Caught some big striper, and I still haven't broke one, uh, which that you know really excites me. And just throwing the the five wire. It's got four blades. Uh, I talked about it before, but it's got a really cool swivel design where you don't have to open it, but you just, you just slide your little swim baits on. Um, 
but I'm throwing this on either 20 pound fluorocarbon or 25 pound fluorocarbon. Just it, it, you can get away with 20 pound fluorocarbon, no problem. Um, throwing it on a 7.6 extra heavy. Uh, and this is actually a heavy, a 7.6 heavy Wish Doctor tackle rod. Um, six six to one gear ratio. I like a slow gear ratio uh, just because with that rig, you don't want to wind it too fast. Um, I like to watch my pan optics. I like to keep it closer to the bottom, you know, usually two or three foot uh, above the bottom. Now, in some circumstances, I'm seeing the bait and the fish higher up in the water column. I'll speed it up a little bit. Uh, but I throw super light heads on it. I throw an eighth ounce head. Um, and that allows me to kind of count it down, uh, watch it on my pan optics. And I can really control the depth with that light uh, that light head. Plus, with that super light head, you throw it out there and just slow roll it. And them swim baits are just, they look so natural in this cold water. And uh, man, I caught a lot of good fish on it this week. Uh, the biggest thing is I'm going in creeks, I'm going to the main, you know, out on the main lake flat, stuff like that. I'm looking for bait. Uh, using my electronics, putting a side scan on to find the bait in the creek. And then once I know where the bait's at, I'll use pan optics and really um, find out where the fish are within that bait. Um, but like I said, you know, uh, 20 pound, I'm throwing Yozuri uh, T7 fluorocarbon. This stuff is unbelievable. It's super soft. It casts great. Um, that's why I'm able to get away with 25 pound fluorocarbon. I can cast, you know, uh, as far as I want to. And it's, it is a bigger diameter, but the line's just super soft, super strong. Uh, haven't broke off hardly on any fish and I've been using it for a year now. So it's, it's really good stuff. Now, as far as swim baits go, uh, true bass swim bait, uh, has, has been the, the, the killer this week. Uh, I've been, I always throw a, a different color one in the middle. I try to either throw a white or a chartreuse one in the middle, just because I like something to attract the fish. Um, but this week, surprisingly, most of the fish came off the, the little side swim baits, which that's the true blue color. I'm throwing this in a four inch and a four and a half inch um, true bass swim baits. Check them out online. They make super awesome swim baits. And what I like about them compared to other brands is these swim baits this week and last week combined, I've caught over 50 fish and those are the same swim baits. I mean, I haven't had to change them. They're super strong. Um, I use the little screw lock hooks. So, you know, you twist them on. And if you do that, man, just, you, you'll be able to fish a month just about just on a pack of swim baits, which is really cool. But uh, that's the setup I like to run. I, I run them little true blue uh, color on the side, four inch or the four and a half inch, they're both killers. And then I'll put a citron color in the middle or even uh, bass whackers, kind of their, their white color one. Um, but man, that has been a fish catcher this week. Uh, like I said, reeling it super slow. Um, you want to reel it fast enough to keep it off the bottom, of course, but uh, you want it just to look natural. Um, so super, super slow. Uh, Next off, another cold water bait. I caught a couple on it this week. I'm not a huge, I, I don't throw this bait a ton, but that's just a little blade bait. Um, something that's just got, uh, it's, it's very subtle, it's not very loud, and it just makes a real tight vibration. I'm, I'm throwing it out there and I'm, I'm just kind of dragging it slash uh, yo-yoing it, like a slow yo-yo or a drag. Um, throwing that on 14 pound T7 fluorocarbon. Um, uh, this is a 7.2 medium heavy, a uh, half fiberglass, half uh, graphite rod. So it's got a really good tip on it. I'm not scared to lose fish. Um, a seven, I think it's a seven, three to one gear ratio. And uh, caught a couple fish on it. But with that being said, it still seemed like they, they, they wanted that rattling vibe this week. Um, and I've talked about this bait every single week since it got cold. But throw that five eight ounce rattling vibe. Um, that little royal purple color is just a killer. Uh, caught several on citrus, caught some on red this week. Um, you know, those three colors have just been killer lately on Chickamauga. And it's kind of the same thing there as I'm doing with the Alabama rig. I'm looking for bait, but up, a little bit more up shallow. Uh, throwing this a lot around grass. If I can find any grass left, there's still a decent amount if you know where to look. Um, still a good bit around the south end around Harrison Bay. And there's, there's a little bit left on the north end. Um, so, you know, if I can find that grass or even some places there isn't grass, but you know, it's three or four foot deep. It's almost too shallow for that Alabama rig. I'm picking up that Yozuri rattling vibe. I'm yo-yoing it. You know, I'll throw it out there, let it go to the bottom. I'll, I'll pick it up and then I'll kind of reel my line tight as it's falling back down. Most of your bites are going to come in the fall. You're going to get a, a distinct little tick and that's, that's a fish reel into it. And, um, man, they've been getting a good too. I mean, usually when you're rattle trap fishing, you lose several fish, but man, the way they've been eating these rattling vibes lately, I'm, I, we haven't lost hardly any, um, you know, knock on wood, hopefully we don't lose any this week, but, uh, um, same thing, uh, throw that on 16 pound T7 fluorocarbon. Um, I, I like a little bit faster gear ratio. I think it's a seven, seven, five to one. That way I can just kind of keep it coming. I can really slack out when one hits. 
And then uh, for the rod, it's a 7.2 medium heavy, half glass, half graphite, same thing, the same rod as that last one, uh, which Dr. Talco rod. And for the same reasoning, that graphite uh, gives you enough strength to, to rip that bait out of grass, and then that, that glass in it gives you the, the, the give and, the, and really helps you fight those fish as you're getting them to the boat. Um, besides that, uh, a bait I like to throw around this time of year, really haven't had a ton of success on it yet, but it, it's any day now before I catch a giant or two on it. And that's just a big swim bait. Uh, I throw several different big swim baits this time of year. Mag draft's a good one. There's a couple other ones I'll probably talk about in future weeks. Um, but that's just something I like to slow roll around. If, if I know a, maybe there's a specific windblown point or specific brush pile where I think there might be one giant laying in, I love to pick that bait up and just roll it over it. Um, throwing that on 25 pound T7 fluorocarbon. Uh, throwing this on a 7.9 extra heavy Hydrilla Gorilla. Um, which Dr. Tackle rod. This is one of my favorite punching rods of all time, and it makes for a really sweet swim bait rod. Um, haven't done uh, too much on it. The water is a little bit cold for it, but it, it's going to be, a, uh, be a, a real killer as the water warms up. And it's one of the things you're not going to get a ton of bites with that giant swim bait. You know, my best days with a swim bait that big are 12 fish, you know, but usually that, that caliber is there. You know, your average fish is going to be a four plus pounder. Um, so if you're out here, you know, you're trophy hunting, like I like to do a lot this time of year, uh, you know, that's a bait I'll definitely have tied on. And then last, but definitely not least is a jerk bait. I like throwing that, that three DB, uh, one ten deep jerk bait from Missouri. Um, and that's one of my, my go-to colors when this water starts to clean up a little bit. It's just kind of a, a sexy translucent, uh, shad. I think it's sexy shad on their website, but it's a lot more translucent than most of them. Um, and you can see if you get this thing in the sun, there's actually a little shimmy towards the front. It just looks so realistic in the water that, um, and I think that's a big thing when the water gets really cold and it gets really clear. Uh, I feel like those fish get a lot more selective the colder the water gets. Um, and so with that, I'm throwing a 10 or 12 pound T7 fluorocarbon. It just kind of depends on how deep I want to get the bait. Where I'm fishing right now, um, you know, I want that bait to get anywhere from about seven to 10 foot. So I'm throwing it on a 12 pound line. That bait goes about eight and it's, it's just perfect. It'll sit right there in front of their face. And uh, the colder this water gets, like it looks like it's going to these next couple days, the slower I'll, I'll work the retrieve. You know, I'll throw that bait out there. I'll twitch it down and, you know, I'll get it down to about that seven or eight foot range. You know, I'll make a long cast. And then once it gets there, I'm going to let it sit for five, 10, maybe even 20 seconds before I twitch it again. And, and a, a big thing I like to do, I'll, I'll do twitch, twitch. And a lot of times the next twitch I'll do, I'll twitch it up. And that, what that does is it'll twitch down and then that twitch up, you know, a lot of times when you twitch it down, we'll come up and look at it and you keep twitching it down, they'll keep falling it. But as soon as you twitch it up, that a lot of times will get a reaction and make them commit to it. Um, but yeah, so I think that's a six, six to one gear ratio, a little bit slower gear ratio because you don't really need a fast gear ratio. I throw this on a little bit smaller rod. This is a six, six medium action, uh, uh, shaman, which ta Dr. Tackle rod. Um, I like a, a shorter rod cause I like to be able to jerk it and not hit the water. And, um, just like I can really just, you know, throw that bait wherever I want to and, and make it do a lot of really cool things with a short rod. Um, that's just kind of preference though. You know, you can get away with a seven foot seven, two, uh, I wouldn't go much higher than that with a jerk bait, but, um, that's a killer bait. You know, the colder it gets, the better I've done on a jerk bait. Uh, you just got to have the patience. I, I really like to, um, once I know there's fish in that area, that's when I like to pick up a jerk bait more than anything. So, you know, if I can find them with a, a, a rattling vibe and a, and a um, Alabama rig, that's when I'll kind of, I'll slow down, I'll pick that thing up and I'll pick off some of them big ones that are just lethargic. Um, but that's this week's episode. Uh, we'll go into more detail about what to look for probably next week. Uh, but the main thing is, you know, fish your strengths, find the bait. The fish are so bait oriented right now. Use your electronics to your advantage, put side scan on. Uh, go in them creeks, look on the main lake flats, look, you know, every, everywhere. There's fish everywhere right now. You just got to figure out where that bait's at. And you got to, you know, figure out what baits to catch them with. But those are the, my, you know, five or six baits that I've been using lately. And uh, good luck to y'all in the water. Uh, and I'll see y'all next week. Thanks, guys.